Thanks. Uh, I'd like to thank the organisers for inviting me and giving me the chance to speak here. Um, until a few months ago, I'd never heard of Kassant. I'm very pleased to be here. It's given me a new uh, outlook on, um, on Russia. So um, you've probably heard about our project for a while. So it's, it's going rather slowly, but I'd like to give you some updates on it. Um, at least we've given it a decent name. I've long advocated for this, and we've got a new director who's agreed to it. And it's now called the South African Centre for Exotic Beams. Uh, so I like to say it's ACE Beams, and, and we're also going to make isotopes, so it's also an ACE isotope project there as well. Uh, yeah, new director, Faisal Asai, um, would love to be here, but he's uh, apologises for that. So, as you know, uh, our, our facility is uh, organised around a 200 K200 uh, uh, sec separated sector cyclotron. Mostly we, uh, um, let's just see how all this works. Okay. Mostly we've been accelerating protons uh, for isotope production up to 300 microamps. And since 1990, uh, we've also been doing experiments with heavy ions. This is a map of the whole facility. It's a multi-user facility. There's our main machine right there. Some injector cyclotrons. The main uh, activities uh, are well, they've been therapy, hadron therapy, proton therapy, neutron therapy. There's a big business, uh, isotope production over here. And we do physics with various beams, everything from protons to heavy ions. Um, so shared facility means physics gets the short straw. So it's long been uh, our ambition to, uh, to change this beam schedule where physics only gets beam time on weekends uh, to, to liberate the uh, cyclotron uh, purely for nuclear research, which means getting the other activities like isotope production and so on uh, off the machine. Uh, yeah, so we, we export isotopes like strontium, germanium-82. If you've got any sodium-22 in your laboratory, it came from us. We're the sole supplier at the moment. Uh, we export all over the world. It's a growing business. We're making 50 million rands. Well, the rands devalued, but it probably means this, this year it's uh, even higher up because of that. Uh, so this is, this is one of our big success stories. Less successful has been neutron and proton therapy. Neutron therapy is really only valid for a few kind of uh, tumours. Likewise, um, because we can't give the proper fractionation, uh, it's also only valid for a few uh, a limited number of tumours as well. So uh, the good news, at least we're doing, we think we're doing some good nuclear physics research. It's a big, uh, a big program looking at uh, vibrational states. This means low angular momentum. Pairing isomers, shape coexistence, somehow they're all related. And other groups look at nuclear clusters, chirality, uh, giant resonances, strength functions, and there's also work on reactions, such as for those relevant for astrophysical uh, reasons. Uh, so this is one of our main instrumentation, uh, Aphrodite. Good news is we've got funding to begin upgrading it. It's nine Compton suppressed clover detectors uh, is going to receive another three. There's another application in which we have a very strong chance of getting to add another seven clovers to give us 16 in total, uh, giving us a, an efficiency, absolute efficiency of around 3.2% at, at uh, 1.3 MeV. So this, this turns this machine into a, a triples machine. We've also got a, a segmented clover detector as well, the Tigris type, which we're uh, developing some tracking on that. So this has been going well on, on Aphrodite. We've been studying chirality. This is one of our uh, most recent publications where we've uh, observed for the first time uh, E1 transitions between multiple chiral bands in the same nucleus, uh, showing that uh, at least octopole correlations can coexist with, with nuclear chirality. The next stage is actually uh, you know, Chinese collaborators, Hmong and, all, uh, and so on, uh, interested to seeing if, it, if we can even search for a chiral band based on an octopole shaped nucleus. That's one of the things going on. Um, we've also had another look at uh, Silver 106, which was a bit of a problem. People had interpreted these two bands as chiral or some kind of a shape, chiral shape fluctuations. But actually, if you go back to basics, it turns out that these bands are, can be interpreted quickly as four quasi particle bands. Uh, the other big instrument is our K600 magnetic spectrometer. This has been uh, upgraded for operation at zero degrees. Um, and in, in fact, what we're planning to do now is to shift Aphrodite over onto the spectrometer, uh, do particle gamma ray coincidences. So uh, uh, we'd be looking at the scattered beam going through at zero degrees and then looking at uh, the decay, for example, uh, of uh, resonances. 
So if we're looking at the pygmy, pygmy dipole resonances in Samarium 154 as one of the first experiments. Okay, what, coming back to what is ACE beams and ICE isotopes, what we want to do is we want to shift proton therapy away from its ember labs. It can't be done efficiently there. Uh, and then we also want to shift the isotope production off our SSC onto a new machine, free up uh, the SSC for physics. Uh, there's a fact that it can easily double the physics beam time. And uh, that also gives us time to make radioactive beams and we're proposing at the moment to use the ISOL method. Maybe in the future we can think about in-flight production. So basically we will start out by uh, fissioning uranium and go to the neutron rich side. So this is a project very much similar to, for example, the SPES project. Uh, we have the opportunity to uh, make these nuclei closer to uh, stability also with the ISOL method. I think you've you're well aware of this audience of, of, of the physics that's out there in the neutron rich side. Um, I hope uh, Rick and Liv's us something to do, but basically we are looking at uh, the astrophysical aft process. You need to measure things like level densities, strength functions, look for pygmy resonances and so on to uh, be able to understand these in gamma reaction rates. And we also know very well about what the nuclear physics is on the neutron rich side. You have the possibility of tensor forces that uh, Takahara Otsuka has been looking at and uh, theorising. There's also the possibility of neutron skins. We, we will probably not get out far enough, like, for example, FRIB, to really uh, notice this. But anyway, this is the interest in the neutron rich. Uh, South Africa has got a core of material scientists who are quite keen on injecting uh, radioactive probes into materials for doing things like uh, MOS power spectroscopy. They go to CERN and solder at the moment, and here's an example of uh, some uh, iron 57 implant into diamond. And they do other things as well, for example, um, uh, emission channeling, uh, again, to look at how our different atoms implant themselves and, and locate themselves in crystals. So that's the main sort of the physics flavour. Um, so our our project is divided into phases. This phase, at least, is a funded phase. This is a, a technical design study, but also it's to build a, a test iron source. This one's in collaboration with INFN uh, Lignaro to put a copy of their target iron source out of Timber Labs on, on a kind of a test bench. After that, what we want to do is install a new cyclotron and beam lines, a new isotope production target, so it'll basically build an isotope production facility. And then finally, uh, we can do ISOL at, at a timber labs with um, post-accelerated uh, uh, um, uh, beams. So phase, phase zero is actually happening, I'm pleased to, to announce. Um, what we're doing here is uh, going to build a copy of the SPES front end. In fact, it is built. I've just received news that uh, Lignara has completed it. And uh, next month we will go over there, do the acceptance test, and then this will come to a timber labs. Uh, Lignaro are going to be running at 40 MeV, a 200 microamp beam, but uh, we've upgraded this source to be able to run a 70 MeV beam. Uh, at that point, we're doing about 10.5 kilowatts, but the fission yield with the increased uh, energy will, will double to about 2 by 10 of the 13. And as I said, this should be at a 10 hours before the end of the year. Uh, we've been doing some tests with Lignaro, for example, high power tests of the silicon carbide targets. Uh, silicon carbide rather than uranium carbide simply because the radiation is lower. This is happening in our isotope production vault and we've basically been validating uh, all the finite element analysis of these targets and it all looks kind of very good at the moment. So this was the Atemba Lab demonstrator facility. Uh, this is our plan for it, basically beam comes in. There's the Italian front end, analyze, uh, we'll have a laser source to selectively ionize things and then go out to an analysis station. And we're hoping that that thing will be ready by 2020, except uh, we are going to change our plan. This is the original idea for it. We'd build a whole new uh, facility here uh, for isotope production um, and then go on and inject to the SSC and then go up here, for example, where the demonstrator would be and so on. So only problem with this, it's, it's, it, we, we figured out we couldn't really do simultaneous production. We'd have to do two weeks of isotope production with the uh, 70 MeV machine, even though it's got dual extraction, uh, simply because it's just the beam would be too unstable, and then we'd have to do two weeks of rib. Um, and we'd be using, again, something like either a best cy cyclotron or an IBA cyclotron, and uh, like this one, this one's being installed at Lanyaro and due to fire up soon. So this is the floor plan we came up with. You put your cyclotron in the middle, isotope production stations, rib production stations, 
uh, then a cool long mass separator, low energy lines, charge breeding, and then up here, off to our, our, our injector. However, by late 2015, we live in not quite a first world country. <laughs> this happened, and things were going into a state of major panic. Uh, the, the, the cost of that facility that I just showed you was just getting to be too high to, to start the project. Uh, the civil construction was looking too long for the resources that we had. Uh, but the NRF, that's our National uh, Research Foundation, told us that it has easily, well not so much easily, but it could find the cash to fund the cyclotron alone, if only we could find a place to put it. So uh, with that, into plan B. Uh, and uh, so, as I said, the, um, a lot of this therapy, uh, proton and neutron therapy wasn't doing too well, so the idea is you have an existing vault, we'll put the new cyclotron into that vault over there. So for example, uh, that, that there's existing isotope production facility, you have to just turn the bombardment stations around uh, to face this, the, the, the new cyclotron and we put a new room in here and hey presto, uh, all of isotope production then goes onto this machine. Frees up the main machine completely for nuclear physics. Of course, in this solution, it's a, it's a short term, good solution in the so short term, in the, in the longer term it means we'll have to have a, build a new dr um, post accelerator. Okay, so here we go. Advantages, this one has much lower startup costs, much shorter construction time. Not only that, because you have a dedicated uh, cyclotron to isotope production, it makes money, which pays for the project. Um, so we can get a loan, for example, and then pay it off. In fact, there's also a lot of private people wanting to join this project and make a bit of money out of it. Um, and also that lets us use our, ter our low energy test facility far sooner because now it gets more beam time. Uh, and no, that won't be a test facility, as I'll show in a moment. And we can do uh, uh, more research with it. So the idea now is to upgrade uh, the demonstrator. It's now a low energy rib facility. Faisal uh, likes to call it low rib. Um, and so this, this won't be just the demonstrator. It will, in fact, be uh, designed to be permanent and will be the first fault of our phase two later on. There will be a, a post accelerator following it. Of course, you'd have a fair idea we do beta decay studies of these um, neutron-rich nuclei, fundamental symmetries, material sciences, and so on. So this is where the, the, uh, the, the low rib would go, right here. So originally, the demonstrator would be po pointed there, uh, and now we'll make a much larger facility in this region. This is, this is fairly down the road, the designs for this. This here is, is somewhat imaginary is we'll have to build a post accelerator after, uh, after this, this machine, but it's, it's, it'll be also designed to couple in and go back into our, uh, for example, original uh, vaults here or build a new experimental hall. So that's essentially where we're at at the moment. Uh, there's pretty good prospects of this getting funded and this, this is practically half funded, it's still with the money from the demonstrator. So our machine, if, uh, if we could take 150 microamps of 70 MeV protons, that's 2 by 10 to the 13 fissions a second. This is a pretty strong rate. This is, uh, technically, it's more than uh, space because they are running at lower energy. And you can see that some of the strongest isotopes are up here in the red, uh, are hitting 10 to the 10, 10 to the 11 particles a second. But this is, of course, unaccelerated. Um, but it's still a very highly intense radioactive beams, and we're certainly able to reach uh, this double magic number and possibly touch this, the, the boundaries of nickel 78. So uh, the analysis stations at the moment we're in some collaborations with different groups and um, or say have their beta, you're going to hear about that soon. Uh, for the Alto facility uh, they're going to build some extra copies in, in collaboration with Lindyara and at Timber Labs. So this is a, a sort of our long-term plan is to use uh, a copy of the, of the Alto device. But in the shorter term, we're actually also developing uh, simpler tape stations in collaboration with uh, a Slova uh, a Slovakia. Martin Venhard has a smaller one. So we're about basically building a, co a copy of that. We'll stick it on a stable beam line and start to implant um, recoils from nuclear reactions into our tape, transport them and do experiments. This is uh, sort of similar to what, what was done at Yale a few years back. And um, this, this tape station I also show because uh, Hopefully we can transport it up to Dubna for the GALS project and I think Sergei Semenoy has a post about the GALS thing. Um, yeah, detectors, we can basically put all our Aphrodite detectors uh, onto it, uh, so they'll get shifted over. Lep detectors, 
tide risk detectors. Hopefully this will be 16, we won't even need that many. A um, long time ago we had a donation from Orsave, their old electron spectrometers. Uh, we've also got a superconducting spectrometer donated to us from BOM. Uh, Pete Jones is instrumental in getting these spectrometers up and going, plus we have a few lanthanum bromides to add in. So we have the, the nucleus already of a experimental station being worked up for the low energy uh, rib facility. Okay, I, I'll just add this one in, that we've got a collaboration with JINR on charge breeding. Now this is, of course, relevant to post-acceleration. Uh, and basically, we're looking at um, how to inject uh, one-plus beams into the ECR, the Temple Labs, and the ESIS uh, at Dubna, uh, with a view, basically, later on, we'll be injecting radioactive one-plus beams, uh, at least for us from our side, uh, as the first chain of the post-accelerator. Okay, um, let me just summarise then. Um, we're up upgrading a lot of our instrumentation. Aphrodite array is basically going to have its efficiency doubled. Uh, we're going to be shifting Aphrodite onto the spectrometer. Um, we hope in about four years' time to have a uh, fairly high-intensity, low-energy rib facility. I mean, even earlier than that, we'll be, we'll be getting ribs, but, but it's at that stage, it's still be in development. Uh, but by, by, hopefully by four years' time, we'll be doing some rather more serious experiments with it. Uh, we, we're fairly optimistic about getting our 70 MeV cyclotron funded and, and placed in a, in a, an old isotope, um, an old um, hadron therapy vault. Uh, so, but the, the, actual, the actual funding is being secured at the moment, uh, but it, it looks very optimistic. Uh, and that will free up the SSC entirely for research. Um, we'll be making some cash which we can feed back into um, paying for our, our, uh, our cyclotron and so on. Okay, with that I, I think I'll just um, uh, thank you all and just thanks for some slides and, and collaborations with various groups. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Uh, please, questions? Yes, please. Temba Lab, or are you helping to the operation? Well, the, the plan really is that uh, uh, one, one of the problems has, has been, the, the, you know, for the proton therapy has been the, the, uh, the, the inability to give the proper beam time. Yeah. Uh, the second problem is the lack of buy-in from doctors. Uh, basically, it's, it's Temba Labs is, you know, halfway out of the city, okay. and it's not attached directly to a hospital. Okay. We have a hospital that's, that's attached to our facility, but the doctors aren't there. So these are two things that have contributed to its slow, you know, to say to, it hasn't been as, as successful as it should have been. Yeah. And the plan now is to, is, to, um, is to try to get into a hospital, a whole new dedicated facility. So th that's a separate project. It, it won't, won't be at a Timber Labs, and uh, we will try to get one placed in a hospital. Uh, if, if that fails in a few years' time, then I think the Timber Labs has to walk away from it. Uh -huh. The neutron therapy, as I say, it's only got a, a few kinds of cancers, tumours yeah. uh, that, it's, that it's good for, and otherwise you could use photon therapy. So there's not a strong case, a strong case for, for neutron therapy. 